Okay, it's time. What are you watching, by the way? You are watching a video where I am now in JavaScript, in the browser, training a neural network to recognize doodles of cats, rainbows, and trains. And you don't get to see anything here yet. We're gonna, I'm gonna get to that eventually. All I'm doing is reporting that I trained over one epoch with 2,400 different doodles, 800 cats, 800 rainbows, 800 trains. Now what I wanna add to this video is I wanna test. I have also testing data, which the neural network has not been trained with, that is also labeled. I wanna see, is it able to guess what any of that stuff is and how accurately is it able to guess? So let's do that right now. So one thing that I did previously is I took all of the training data and put it into one particular array. So let's do that with the testing data as well. Shuffling doesn't really matter, but I might as well shuffle it because I'm not actually training in this case. So we'll, we'll take out the shuffling. So I'm going to say let testing be an empty array and I'm going to put in everything, all of the testing. Sorry, I don't know why I'm, I can just copy paste. And so this, I'm going to, um, I am going to, so actually let, let's do a little refactoring here. Let's, uh, let's take out, let's take this and let's put this into a function called train or train epoch because I love the word epoch. It makes me sound like I'm doing something really fancy and futuristic. Um, so I'm going to train for one epoch and so that's going to go right here, train epoch and you know, this was kind of awkward what I did here, and I thank you for me, I have to be putting in the chat. I'm trying to be a person who uses some of these higher order array functions these days. So let's quickly, I hope I don't ruin everything. Uh, one nice thing that I could do, I don't need, um, I don't need to have this silly little loop here. I can just say inputs equals data map x, x divided by 255. So this should, this makes a new array which takes the previous array and divides each value by 255. And this uses arrow syntax. And you can watch one of my higher order function video tutorials about the map function. But that just makes this a little bit cleaner. So let's add that in. Uh, and now let's run this again to make sure I didn't break it. Ah, uh, line 41. Shuffle train. Oh, I made this. So um, let's pass in the training array. Um, and we're going to train for one epoch. <laughs> finish, finish. There we go. Train for one epoch. So now I'm going to, that still works. I'm going to comment this out. And now I want to just check and take a look at the testing array to see if it has all the testing data in it. And it does, it has 2600, which is right. Because if I had 800, It shouldn't have 2,600 in it. Hold on. Oh, yes. Look at this. <laughs> That's a bad error. I need to be concatenating with testing. So much for my copy pasting. Terrible, terrible. All right. I knew 2,600 was wrong. 600. 600 is right because <laughs> it's 200 times 3. I have 600 test data points. So now what I need to do, and let's just do this with one. right? I can still do, I can evaluate how it's going to do with the testing data without actually, um, without actually training it. So let's look at how this goes. So um, let's write a function, let's write a function called testing, wait, what did I call this? Uh, train epoch, uh, test all with the testing data. So let's do something similar to this function. And let's rename this data, just so it's, no, 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 let's not rename that. So let's do uh, test all uh, with the uh, testing data. I don't need to shuffle it. I want to go through everything. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I want to map it, same inputs, the same targets, the same way. But now, here's the thing. I want to say, uh, let prediction, or I'm going to say let guess 
equal neural network dot predict uh, inputs. And actually, I don't need to have targets, right? I just need to have a label, right? I want to predict, my guess is, what does it think it is? So right now, what I'm actually going to do rather absurdly is I'm just going to console log the guess. And I'm going to console log the label. Okay? And I'm going to, just for a moment, I only want to do this with one data point in the testing data set. So I want to test everything. Okay? So I want to run this code. It's so quiet now. <laughs> I want to run this code and I want to see what does it think it is and what should it be. Let's run this. So we can see, look at this, these are the numbers that came out totally randomly. 0 0.05, 0 0.08, 0 0.08882. So it thinks it's a number 2, 0, 1, 2, and actually it's a 0. It got it wrong. Um, it thinks it was a train, but really it was a cat. But that's okay, it just got it wrong, but this is good. So first of all, I need to do something where I uh, evaluate which one is it based on these numbers. So I need to find the index of the maximum, uh, I need to find the index of the maximum value. So let's go to testing, okay? So I need to turn this guess, which is just three numbers, into a cl classification. So basically I wanna say let classification, something like the maximum of so let's see, is P5 has a max function, right, where I can give it two values, and it gives me the maximum one. If I have an array with a bunch of values, does the max function do anything for me? It tells me which one was the maximum. Oh, uh, sorry. Ah! Let's, I, I, I just want to make sure it's working. A equals 0 to 9, 111, 4. Max A, 111. But I want the index. So does max secretly, if I call it in a different way, or I know arg max is kind of the, uh, there is no P5 function called arg max. Does array have arg max? That's the technical term that you'll see in a lot of, um, kind of machine learning libraries, argmax is a function that will give you the index to the maximum value in the array. So I could use, um, I could use uh, reduce and write my own argmax function. Um, Sixy in the chat just gave me a really great tip because I forgot, whoops, that um, arrays have a, um, a index of function. So look at this, watch this. If I say max a, that gives me 111. What if I say a index of max a? That gives me 3 because the index of 3, of sorry, 111 is 3, right? This would be negative 1 because it doesn't exist. So I can say the classification is the guess dot index of and let's separate this out. Let m equal max of the guess. Like this is the max value. And then I want to get the classification is the index of that max. And then I can just say, uh, I can just say console.log. Um, let's look at it to make sure this is right. Console.log classification and label. So guess are the raw array values. Classification is the argmax, the index to the one in that array that's the largest. And this is the target label, what it's supposed to be. So let's run this. And we got, uh, so let's look at this. Does this make sense? This is a tiny number, 0 0.03. That's a big one, 0 0.87. Yes, it gave me one, 0, 1. That's, that's the, oh, I can do, by the way, I can just unfold it to look. That's correct. Let's look at, let's do this one more time. Uh, we can see like, oh, got one again. Now it got uh, one. It's always the middle one. That's interesting. Uh, but that's just random. Two. It got two. So this is working. Now you'll notice these don't add up to one. 
0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.16. So again, I really should probably be implementing softmax as the function that I use that um, when I uh, when exiting out into the output from the neural network. Softmax is a special kind of activation function essentially, and this is something I cover in the neural network series that takes whatever that output is and transforms it into probability values that will all add up to 100%. But I'm gonna come back to that in another video. This will just work just fine for right now. Um, and so I can say, now, let's say, uh, let correct equal zero. If, if classification equals the label, then correct plus plus. And then I want to say the percentage equals the number correct divided by um, the total, which is uh, testing.length. So console.log percent. So let's look. Okay, 0% correct. 0% correct. Can I get lucky and get one? <laughs> I got one correct. Okay, so now what I need to do is let's do it for all of them. Let's not console log everything. And we should see, right, just by sheer randomness, we should see about one third correct, right? Not there's been no training. The neural network, without any training, without knowing anything, should get one out, about one out of three correct. Oh, why do I have, oh, I'm sorry. This should happen at the very end, after all the loops are done. You can see, by the way, I did get exactly that. 35%, 35%, 24%. So there's a lot, there's very few, there's only two. Oh, look at that, exactly one third correct. So things are going as expected. But can we improve it? Can we improve it just a little bit? Will this actually work? It's sort of sad that I'm doing this without showing you anything visual, but I'm kind of thinking you, the person watching who has visual talent, you could actually start to, a project for this would be to animate the training process and all of that. But let's, let's train for one epoch. Let's just run through the training set then let it test again. I wish my sound effects were working because I would certainly use a drone roll roll. And then I'm going to say uh, uh, testing result. And by the way, I want to move this data prep up here. And then I'm going to just say this. So basically, we've prepped all the training data We've prepped all the testing data. See how much work, by the way, it is just to work with the data? That is like a whole project unto itself. Then I'm going to train, and then I'm going to test. And we're going to see. And wouldn't it be nice if the testing maybe returned it? So let's actually uh, return that value and console log it down here, because I feel like that's kind of what I want to do. Uh, correct. Percentage correct. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go, let's see. Training, 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 I'm training all the way. I like to train, I like to train, training all the way. Hey, training, 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 my machine. Hey, we got 80% correct. This shows that things are working, right? We got 80% correct, that is so exciting to me. I have to <laughs> toot the horn. Um, wow, that's, I think it was kind of like, so that's really interesting. Mm, wow, well, this is very exciting. Uh, I don't even know what to do now. Percentage is correct, 80%. Let's just confirm that, right? Ready? I'm gonna comment out the training. No training, no training. Remember, with training, 80% correct, no training. 33% correct. This is good. Machine learning. It's a thing that sometimes kind of almost maybe sort of works, but is highly problematic for many important ethical and social reasons. But that is something we will come back to. So we should really be, again, this is a good point. Should I even be doing what I'm doing? I think it's okay to be doing what I'm doing. Everything is pretty transparent. We know where the data comes from. We know what's in it. Um, and we can see, and we've learned something about a neural network. Oh, I'm just amazed here. Okay, so I should finish up this video, but let's, let's just do something interesting. Let's say for let i equal zero, i is less than five, i plus plus. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to train, oh, we're going to train, we're going to say epoch i plus 1. I'm just going to start with 1 and go to 6. So I can just say epoch plus i. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, I'm going to do it five times. Let's see how the percentage in, increases. And let's make sure my training function re-randomizes the training data, reshuffles the training data. That's very important each time. Okay, let's see how much better it gets. Training, training, training. I'm training all my epochs. Loading, loading, loading in training epochs. Training, oh, 76% correct. Training, training, training. I'm training all my epochs. You are watching a video where I am not editing out the fact that 79%. Training, 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 I'm training all the way, I'm almost to epoch three, and here's what we say, 81%. Training, 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 I'm training all the way, I'm almost to epoch four, and this is what we say, 80, we went down, wah, wah. So there's kind of a, it's interesting to see this here. So there's, this is where now we're revealing, I haven't really been, um, I have not been, uh, I'm not doing everything the, the quote unquote best or optimal or m m way that I could be. So for example, this idea of softmax and cross entropy, I've really got to come back to that. That's hopefully a way that's going to improve the training process. It's going to be able to squeeze out a little bit more accuracy if I add these two elements to my machine learning system. I also have something where it's like, hello, my training, 2400 drawings, that's like the tiniest bit ever. So I probably would want to run this with a much larger training set. That's really going to help. I probably want a kind of a larger testing set as well, just to have a better sense of how accurately this is doing. But I think we're in pretty good shape here. I feel like I'm happy with where I am so far. In the next video, what I want to do is kind of clean this up a little bit and think about maybe how to like animate the process, like show that it's training so it's not just saying loading here forever um, until it gets to the end. Um, and then I'm going to add a part where I can draw my own little drawing and see if it can recognize my cat versus my rainbow versus my own train. So in the next video, that's what I'm gonna do and I'll see you there. <laughs>